the, the, the star now, but fracas. Um, storm in a teacup or iceberg in the water, dead ahead? Full of stern, Captain Starmer, full of stern. This is a disaster, actually, and it's been incredibly badly handled by Starmer and his cohorts. They're trying to look tough. They're trying to say, Diane Abbott is on the Corbyn wing of the Labour Party. Uh, Jeremy, uh, Starmer would rather bury that wing of the party completely. Yep. But they treat her incredibly badly. She's an iconic figure. Look, I don't agree with Diane Abbott virtually on anything policy-wise, but she's got a place in Labour Party history. She's the first... And British black politics beyond Labour, actually. She, she is taught in Black History Month. She is taught in politics lessons. She is an iconic figure. And she was suspended from the Labour Party over a, a, a letter which was uh, downplaying racism against and Jewish people. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a year ago. And the suspension has been in place for over a year. Starmer's been asked again and again, when is suspension being lifted? What's happened to now? And he said, it was an ongoing process, nothing to do with me, Gov. The, comp the inquiry was completed in December. At best, he's been dissembling. At worst, he's been lying. Because been... he must know that inquiry had been completed because it was done by <laughs> Labour's NEC committee and he's a member of it and he's the leader of the party. Yes, and one wonders whether he was hoping to wait until November, which is when everyone thought the election was going to be. Mm. A July election has taken him by surprise, clearly, on this issue. I think there's an element of that, Ranveer, that the election has come before some of these ish, sort of disciplinary issues have been sorted out. How yeah, but that largely, one had but that one largely, had been resolved. Jackie, I... that one had been resolved. It was resolved in well, December. Uh, Elements of it had been resolved. It clearly hadn't been completely resolved. She hadn't, for example, got the whip back. She got the whip back this week. Um, the problem emerged, and I and I don't disagree largely with what Andrew has said. And I, I think Diane Abbott has an enormous um, history, a significant, you know, a 37-year career as a member of Parliament, the first black. Uh, woman to be elected to Parliament, she should have been treated with more respect than she has been. Well, the investigation should have happened more quickly mm. than it happened. So we don't disagree about that. On your original question, mm -hmm. Richard, you know, is this going to com completely disrupt the election campaign? I don't think it is. I mean, yesterday, it clearly did. Labour wanted to talk about the health service, they wanted to talk about cutting waiting lists, and they spent the whole day talking about Well, and they'll be continuing, yes, and that will, but that will continue thing. until it is resolved. I mean, look, yeah. the Times broke this story yesterday. It was the Times that was leaked to. Somebody in Labour went to the Times and Somebody, said... Somebody... And can I just say, the person who wrote that story in the Times, Patrick yeah. Guy, is incredibly well-connected yeah. and plugged into yes, the Labour Party. Yes, I know Party. he is, yeah. I mean, He's that, got a very so good reputation. That story was accurate. So we can, we can take the story at face value. Then at lunchtime, uh, you've got the leader of the Labour Party saying, no, 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 it's not true. And I thought that the obvious follow-up question, which nobody actually asked him, was, well, is it going to be true? Actually, is she about to be uh, um, told that she can't stand? And that's what The Times speculates this morning. They think that his denial yesterday was a technicality. They say that the decision hasn't quite yet been passed through Labour's National Executive Committee and the implications that it will be. And when that happens, where do we go? I mean, will she, will she run as an independent? Yes. From what she said yesterday, she talked to her supporters in, uh, in, in Hackney, uh, where she's incredibly popular. Oh, she's got a majority of 33,188. Yeah. It's a whopping majority. I, I lived in Hackney many years ago, and she, she was a, a, a towering figure she's in the local community. She's hugely popular. She really is. Yeah. And, uh, and I think she will run as an independent, and she should, because she... Do you think she'd win? Because it's, it's a Labour majority. Well, it I... is. Well, she, I mean, it would be typical, because she... How much of that is a person vote? A lot, I would say. And what's interesting is, is that the, there's a, a barrister who actually advised Labour on its anti-Semitism problem himself has come out and said... You know, and I mentioned that because, of course, it was an anti-Semitism row that yeah. got yeah, her yeah. barred uh, in the first place or, or uh, the whip removed in the first place. He said that this handling of Miss Abbott's case has been utterly shambolic and would have a tremendous impact on the Afro-Caribbean vote. Well, I don't think even the most tribal and supportive Labour person, in which category I put myself, <laughs> could come on the telly and say, well, this has been a major success this <laughs> week for Labour. Yeah, but you the know. impact on voters is quite interesting, yeah. isn't it? Oh, because yeah. she represents a large majority of black African voters who actually in this country revere her quite rightly. Well, Andrew is absolutely and right. Trust she, her. she is rightly taught uh, and seen as a major and significant figure in British politics and uh, as a representative of the black community. Well, look, I mean, here's, more... here's a scenario for us then. Uh, let's say that the national executive do say to her, you can't run. She declares as an independent. Obviously, Labour will put up their own candidate in, in her constituency. Mm. And then you'll you'll be have, brave enough to do and that. Then you'll, well, yes, exactly. Well, there and then, good, and, and, and there then, some good people And then you'll have that. Diane Abbott, recently Labour, now an independent, 
fighting against the official Labour candidate yeah. and therefore throwing all the darts and javelins that she's capable of throwing at the Labour candidate. And, with, and of course, with Jeremy Corbyn next door. So it's a recipe but, for disaster. Yeah, and, and, but yeah, can I say, Jackie, the irony here is they, she thought she'd reached a dignified yes, exit. So the they put her back in the party, yeah. they give her the whip back, so she's effectively no longer an independent MP, she's a Labour MP, so she can stand down today, end her parliamentary career after 37 years as, as a Labour MP. And that was ripped away from her by this briefing to the yeah. Times, said, nah, that's not going to happen, we're forcing her to stand down, we're not going to let her run. That was brutal, well, the and it is, blindsided her, and it was... And, and, it, it, does, did it, and it was vindictive. And did it be honest, it does look like... It well. does look like... Well, that briefing, I mean, and that's the question that, here is, why isn't he in control of the message here? Because well, I think, clearly well, somebody very point, senior has gone against the was, leadership. No, well, did it? Um, I think this was an enormous cock-up. I mean, for... Mm. Obviously of communication it was within the party. Because of the reasons that we're talking about it. I think it Andrew vindictive. is right. That that briefing meant that Diane Abbott then was put on to yes. the defensive. When but... she should have, if she was going to leave Parliament, she should have been allowed to leave with dignity, well, yeah. reflecting the 37 years of service and that what it she comes, I don't know whether I'm reading this wrong, but it feels like the briefing was malicious against Keir... It was almost in order to put Keir Starmer in a terribly difficult position. Or is that the wrong reading of the situation? It felt like something... I think it was pure spite against Diane Abbott. Pure because spite against Diana, but without thinking of the consequences... Well, they didn't think there it is through. ..for the leadership there, of the party. You know, let's be clear, there has been, rightly, uh, a strategy that Keir Starmer has led to get the party back into a position where it's electable. That's the reason why you saw the strong action taken against Jeremy Corbyn, who is also, of course, running now as an independent yep. against a Labour candidate in, in Islington. And... Broadly, I think that was absolutely the right strategy because it enables Keir Starmer to say, I've moved on from the Corbyn years, the disastrous yeah. uh, result that Labour had in 2019, and now you can trust me. This is a real sort of... More than a blip. I mean, it's a real problem. And the it's a strategy real human, was right, but this is a It's a real human drama as well, because, you know, they're in neighbouring constituencies. We know that once upon a time, many, many years ago, they were partners, they were lovers, they went on motorbike trips to, on, they on, did. in Europe together. And now here they are, right at the, at the centre of this political storm, next door to each other in terms of constituencies. Let me ask you this as a prediction. Crystal ball time. If she does... If she is banned from running as a Labour candidate and she does run as an independent against the official Labour candidate, who's going who's gonna to sop up those Labour votes? Is it going to be her or the official candidate? Who's going to win? Well, I think there'll be... I think pe people will flock into that constituency to work for her. I think... Uh, and if I... I wouldn't want to be the Labour candidate taking on Diane Abbott <laughs> no. in her hackney uh, heartland. No. She's an enormously important individual, but... Uh, and she might pull it off as an as an independent. I mean, let's be clear. She has not said that she is going to uh, stand as an independent. No, no, no. She wants to continue as the MP. I hope that there is a way for Labour to sort this out uh, so that she doesn't feel that she has to stand as an independent. Mm. Um, but she was very... Uh, it was interesting last night. She didn't say, I will be, come hook or by crook, your Labour MP for as long as I can. She said, mm. I'll be your MP for as long as I can. The, the, the she, trouble didn't, is, she some, didn't say Labour. Some, some people around Starmer still think this is job done well, because they think the overriding impression will be that people think this is Keir Starmer being tough with people on the le Corbynite left of the party. My conclusion in my piece of mail is, no, it just makes them look like bullying, bullying incompetence. Okay.